touch on that because you're already using the iPad. We're using Auxiliary 6, as it is here, a bus 6. That is the mix that's going to the streaming and the recording. So everything, obviously, in audio has to be at a level that's good that we can hear it on the, on the video um, system. So what I'm getting is, is that if you're muting main channels from the speakers, you have to make sure, or changing levels on the speakers, you have to make sure you're changing levels in the recording as well. I always recommend a pair of headsets, which you have here. And then if you can essentially listen to uh, output bus uh, six on the headphones, then you know you're mixing for the recording. Um, obviously the speakers in the house are gonna hear what's going on in the house, but I'm just making a point of that the, the levels that we have for audio have to be set up correctly. Um, so whatever you hear in the house is different than what's going to the- To the recording. Going to the, to the OBS yeah. right, or whatever you're gonna use. So it's a totally different mix. And like we have a piano, for example, but I don't need that in the house, but we do need to be able to hear it for the, uh, for the thing. So I, I have a mic, I put a mic underneath the piano. Okay. Just so it can go through to the recording so that it goes out to the world. Exactly. So the idea Steve is getting at is if we don't have a mic on something, we can't hear it outside of the building. Okay. Right? Acoustically, we can hear everything in here. But we have to make sure that things get mics on them and get put into the recording feed or the, as I call it, recording feed. Uh, it's a streaming feed. It's, it's you also are making a recording of each one. Uh, so, and that's bus six, and that's what's set up here. So if you look at your main, that's gonna tell me where my faders are in the main. Okay. And if we look at bus six, that's gonna tell me where my levels are going uh, to the uh, stream mm -hmm. audio. So currently you have guitar, pulpit, lapel, and I don't, oh, hang on a second, this says solo, uh, it's not muted, it's muted. So again, if you were to unmute it, it would turn on, mute it, it would turn off. Everything is exactly the same. It's just that this bus six okay. is what we have to make sure we have a good audio level for that's going out. And four still goes up to the monitors, right? Yeah. Yes, okay. It's so, same idea. Same idea, exactly the same as a monitor mix, except it's, it's our streaming mix. So this is your device that you're gonna control for audio, and we're gonna make sure that it's going good into the stream. Uh, what you will see here, if I turn on a microphone, for example, testing one, two, three, one, two, three, testing one, two, three. So I'm on, pardon me? Sounds like the main mix is muted. It sounds like the monitors are on, but uh, if I get to the main mix here first, which channel is this? I don't know where the labels, the labels aren't all labeled here. Lectern, piano. See, this is the main mix is muted. Exactly. Oh, there you go. Here's the main mix. Check one, two, one, two, one, two. Here is bus six. So I was just trying to see which input that this was on, Steve, because it's not labeled. 13 or 14 or something like 13 that. 13 or 14. Let's see if this is a here. Check, okay. check, check. Yeah, that's uh, there. Yeah, check, 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 check. Okay. So that's channel 13. So if we go into bus 6, we take channel 13, we have to make sure we're turning that up. Check 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2. When we do that, now that is going out bus 6. So we have to make sure that everything is turned up in bus 6 in order to make sure that we have a good level. Hello. Hello. So again, as this was all in here before, okay. I must assume that you guys know how to use it, but if you have any questions, please let me know. Um, the way that these buses are, um, looks like the mutes are common. So whether I am on main or I am on bus six, the mutes remain the same. So when I mute it, I'm muting it everywhere. Okay, that's a good thing. Yeah. So if you are muting things, you're muting them in every every single mix, which is good. And I always recommend using the mute controls over turning faders down. 
When you use a mute control, the fader stays where it is. You know it's at the correct level. If you turn the fader down, then first off, which one was it again and where was that fader again? So it's always best to use the mutes if you could. Obviously, we want to set the levels to make sure that they're correct in the recording. So that's your main audio device. That's the same thing that you had before. So I hope that everyone is all right with that. Again, I'll go back to mix six, and I just want to make sure that you don't miss anything. Yes, I will try to catch up. No, 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 no yeah. it's all good. Um, so <laughs> all I was getting at is this is your audio um, controller here. Right. And we have the main bus, which is how loud it is in the speakers. Okay. That has nothing to do with how loud it is in the recording. Okay. Okay. The recording is on bus six. So we want to make sure if I'm on like 13 that I've turned up. What I generally do is I turn up all of the, every channel that is working, I turn it up. And then I listen to things one on one, especially in the headphones. It's okay if you mute the mains while you're doing that. And again, we can do that right there. And now, well, that's monitors two. Let me go to bus four, mute that, check one, two. Mm -hmm. So now we know all we're, all we're gonna listen to in the headphones, we're not gonna have any uh, uh, other interference. Um, and that's the mix that we want to set up that everything is going out at the same same level. So that's our refresh on that. I will turn the main back on again. I will turn the monitor back on again so that we're not realizing well, how come it's not working. So that's that. I'm not going to get deeply into that, but that, that's what that system is. Basically what we have here with the new video system, rather than having portable cameras that were up there recording, we have two installed cameras. This back here is camera one, it's the first one, that's the main, it's called the back camera, that's the side camera, that's camera two, and they go into this video mixer, okay? So channel one, check one two, check one two, is this one here, channel two, is this one here on the side, okay? Jonathan, you're explicit, I mean, you guys are supposed to have two people so that we can all get close enough to be able to see it. It's hard to sort of navigate. Uh, you okay? You all right? Yeah, just make sure. Here. Yeah. This is what you're gonna use constantly, 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 constantly. So um, just a couple of things about the way that this sets up. First off, if there is a light on a channel, it means that there is an input connected to it. So a simple white means that we have video there. Channel three, you notice we have no input for it. That would be a third camera if we wanted to, or a second computer if we wanted to put the graphics up, up there. But your laptop here is coming in on four, and again, camera one, the back one, is one, and the side one is two. You will notice here that there's a red light here and a green light here. What does that mean? Well, that's also represented by the green box around this image, which is camera one, and the red box around this image means that the red is live. That's what we are streaming. Okay, so this is our fader that goes between the two mixes, or the, the two um, camera feeds. We can either wipe them, which you, actually if you had OBS up, you can see that, but basically it's cutting from here over to here when I'm going up. So now this has changed. This is red, this is green. So this is now my output, the side camera. If I put the fader back down again, this is now the output, the front camera. And it tells you what's going to be next. If the next thing you wanted was going to be the computer, you would simply press four, and when you transitioned, it would go to the computer graphics, or what is now showing on the output. Dead simple, it's not difficult, okay? So there's a couple of other things that you could work with. One is, if you don't like using the fader, you can transition by using the buttons. And they will go back and forth just by simply changing the transition buttons. So you can either use this, which is probably what you're going to do, 
or you could use the transition buttons. Um, this here is how it fades. Because we don't have an output that's showing, a uh, monitor that's showing the output, that's on your OBS software. If you opened it up in OBS and you looked at what the output was, you would actually see this change. This is a wipe, so it's gonna go across the screen and replace it with a new image. The second one is mix, so it's gonna fade out one and fade in the other one. The third one is a cut. So pretty much halfway through that fader, it's just gonna switch to the other, other image. So these are our transitions that we can program in. And again, you see that it'll always go back to the last one that you were on. So if I want to get away from the um, graphics, I would simply go to the camera. Let's say I want to go to camera two next, the side camera, and I would transition to camera two. And then back to, whoop, that's live, and back to camera one by doing that. Typically, you're going to go camera to camera, and you're going to put up graphics tribunals, unless there's a video or presentation or something else. But you're usually just going to be switching between camera one and camera two. So what are the other things doing here? First off, um, this is the output. So if we are finished the church service, or we want to essentially fade to black or fade to white, we can do that by turning this transition. So the output fade. So right now we're on camera two, and I'll just show you what happens. This basically just, well, it's not fading out, it's not showing. But now what happens is you have black. So you basically just dimmed it down to nothing. Stop the video recording, you're done. The opposite is to fade this to white. I don't know why you would do it, it's available, but you can fade it to white by going that way. Again, that's only ever gonna happen at the end of something if you want to put that transition in there. Um, you could, uh, yeah, that's, it's, it, it's relatively easy is what I'm getting at. All you need to do is pick what it is you want. Green is always the thing that's in the preview that's going to go to next. So what I try to get into a habit of is knowing where I am at any given time and knowing which camera I'm going to go to. Even if you're going to, the one thing that you want to make sure you're doing, and I'll get into the PTC controller next, it's very important not to move the camera when it's on, unless you're moving it very slowly. Um, the way that video production is now, when you watch a TV um, episode of anything, things change so quickly in cameras, they're jumping back and forth all of the time. This is not a full motion video production, this is a church service, so we don't really need that. However, motion is good. If I have this camera up here, for example, I'm gonna show you how this works, I can just pull back from it very slowly if I want to. Again, I'm gonna change this to slow. And I can just have it very slowly, just pull back, pull back, pull back, get to the position that I want to be. Now that it, that is doing this live right now, if I was to transition to the next camera, now we're over here, I could take this camera, which is number A, and I could set it where I wanted it to be. Now I'm ready to go transition into when to the new position, okay? This has four cameras available, A, B, C, and D. Obviously we're only dealing with A and B right now because we have two cameras, this one being A, and that one being B. So if we go to number A, and here, let me just show you something right here, uh, which is uh, the back camera right here, if I, really like that look, and that's the look that I wanted to have. Just a little bit. If that's the image that I wanted to have and I was gonna go back to that regularly, I could simply hit store. And pick that position as number one. Now I'm gonna pan out all the way to show a wide shot. And I like that, so I'm going to hit store and put that in number two. Now watch what's going to happen when I simply recall camera one. It's going to go back to my position, that position one, back to position two. 
So what I think will happen here, Mark gets one and two. You guys can have three and four. You don't overlap. Okay. It's it's so easy to do this. What I recommend all the time, when you come in first before church starts, make the presets. Make them for the way that you think it's going to go. You have four of them. When you are at the final position, let's say we're at this position because that's where we wanted to be, and let's say the speakers just moved over a little bit and they seem to always be standing on the one side, what I like to do is get the other camera, basically let's go to B here, get the other camera where I would like it to be, right there, zoom in a little bit. So this is again on the middle of that podium. So now, again, B, store, number one. Now I'm set up over here. If this is live, now's a good time to move this one where you want it to be. So we're going to go back to the long shot on this one, and then we're going to transition over to that. It's that easy. It's literally that easy. So all you need to do is hit store, press a button, and it'll save, save a new preset. And what I try to do in my thinking is I always try to have the same things on the same preset. So the way I do it, my long shot is always the first preset. I'm always going to capture the whole stage apron on my first preset. My second preset is my close-up, my most important close-up. My third preset would be my second most important close-up. My fourth preset would be my fourth most important preset. From the preset, i.e. if I'm going over, I'm on camera two, I'm going to this preset, which is where it is. From there, I can zoom out slowly if I want to. I can move slightly because there's someone else who's going to take over. So there's nothing wrong with doing that when it's on because you're moving it very slowly. But what people don't want to see is if you're on here, as for example, this is live, we don't want to do that. We want to do that when it's off camera, when it's green, or when it's white, meaning it's on, it's on the graphics. So there are three speeds available, slow, medium, and fast. So when you do move the joystick, and it's just as follows, left, right, up, down, turn to the left to zoom out, turn to the right to zoom in. Do the speeds affect the transitions or they just hit a set speed? That it also affects the transition. So when you're on fast, it'll move it faster. When you're on slow, it'll move it uh, slower on the transition as well. Yeah. So that is both. And again, I like to use, I like to use slow unless bang, it has to happen quickly, which case I can go fast, I can preset it, and I can go back to slow. If, if that's what you need to do. Oh my God, I'm late, I'm behind, quick, do that, throw it back to slow. And then these motions don't seem to be so jumpy because you're on the slow, the slow speed. Sounds good. Questions? They jumped again on you. No, 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 it's all good. And that, what, what I'm kind of getting at is, this is what we're dealing with. Nothing is gonna be more difficult than what I've just explained. And it's just repetition makes for a good product when you're finished. Um, there, are, there are all kinds of other things inside of here. You can program all kinds of weird um, images like a negative image, like a sepia tone, uh, like a, a cartoon that turns people into cartoons. Again, it's all features that are available. None of them are probably ever going to use. So I just get used to the fact that I've got two cameras and one video graphics input. I could have a third camera. I could have a third graphics input if I wanted to. As soon as I plugged it in, it would light up to tell me it had video. If we plugged it in and it didn't light up, you'd know I've either I've got a bad cable or I haven't turned my computer on because it will not show up until, uh, I don't know if everyone knows this, but on an HDMI signal, there's a five volt uh, bus. So as soon as it's plugged in, five volts goes along that cable before you even turn a device on to the next device. What happens in video is when you plug a device in, 
that five volt signal tells that device, let's say it's that laptop, it says, what do you need me to display? The display looks at the resolutions that are available and sends it the best resolution it can. That's why HDMI takes a little bit of time when you first plug it in. You go one, two, three, oh, there it is, there's a signal. It's actually sending the five volts, turning that, saying that, give me your best resolution, I'll match it, that happens, and then the video image happens quickly. So that's, that's why there's, there's no five volt present on that bus, so that light is not on on channel three. Got any more questions? It's, I, I know it's easy, but it's not that easy. Yes, Go ahead. I can show you some things, then um, she's gonna show you. She's gonna show you. She's gonna translate to you, right? Okay. I'm just gonna show you. YouTube live, I mean. YouTube live, I mean. It's logged in, but it's how to get YouTube to log in. So he's wondering if we move everything here, how is that going to translate into YouTube live? Because what we do, we just live broadcast the service on YouTube. Mm -hmm. So he's wondering yeah. how the connection would work. Uh, that's inside the computer, the, the, this tower right here. Okay. Let me explain that part. I'll just okay. grab this and know this. So. Okay. <laughs> you don't need it? Yeah. Well, I'm wearing a mask. <laughs> this computer is okay. connected to the internet. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. We're using OBS. So we set up a user that's, that's Knox. And it's got OBS and it's got our streaming code in it. And we go to YouTube with that streaming code. So when Rob was talking about what all the cameras happen. Uh, okay, so there's the ETH. There's what's going there. And so when you fade from one to the other. You this is what I was saying. This is the uh -huh. white. Yeah. So this is how that transition works. As you move it across, it wipes back from left to right. If we do the mix, you'll see this actually fades out and fades back in the new one. And if we do the cut, it just basically changes quickly. Okay. And so um, you can see this is the audio devices, the uh, Black Magic device. And so when you talk, uh, we're not getting any audio, but it's muted on. on. There you go. There we are. There we are. So there's the audio. One, two, three, four, four five, five, six, seven, eight, nine, six. ten. And so that's what we're going to use. What you guys can do um, is set up another user for and do whatever software you want with your streaming code to wherever you want it to go, right? And that was part of the problem. We had to do it this way so that it's not going, our feed isn't going to yours and, and your feed is going to ours and stuff like that. So we had to set up differently. You can set it up however you want. Just set up a new user. Um, I was going to set that up for you, but um, I didn't. we have to sign in with a Microsoft account, and I didn't know what yours was or anything like that. So you guys can do that, right? Set that up. And so then you can, then whatever we do is going to be separate and everything won't inter nothing will interfere with anybody else, right? Um, so that's really all there is to it. It's pretty straightforward. And really, so um, you're not going to use you, uh, OBS or are you? So you won't be as a on your mouse. Okay. You don't think so? Uh, well, uh, we use Prism. Prism Studio. Okay, so you have that program on the computer then? No, you'd have to install it. Right. Uh -huh. And this computer, I've set it up so that it's the graphics computer. So our PowerPoint is there. And, yeah. and at some point, <laughs> we're going to actually make it work. Three. All right. Oh, that's, that's the second slide. So, so if we want to go over to there, use this, and then transition over to there. Yeah. So now we're going to have it. So whatever I select, then it's showing up in the OBS, okay. right? Mm -hmm. And that's going out. Uh -huh. And then I can go back to... And of course, your audio is overlaid over top of that, regardless of what video is in yeah. here. That's the way to set this up so it's a universal audio. So whatever is audio is going on. You can use all the mics just like we did before. All the mics and everything, you just plug it in, set up the audio whichever way you, you need to. Um, and then, but remember that bus six comes out to this and whatever is on bus okay. six, that's what it'll hear. And otherwise it won't. And again, you just pick up the headphones and listen to it and make sure that your mix is balanced all the way across. So I've got some, so I've got some headphones. You guys should get your own headphones. I think that would be better to sanitary okay. wise. Okay. 
And I've got some headphones that Mac uses, and we can share this computer. Um, there's nothing that just sends up, comes up, and then uh, maybe we can set up two users, or you can just close this up and put your own there, like we did before, mm -hmm. and, and run it. Eventually, we'll get it to connected. Rob will eventually supply uh, a device that will get us connected to both this and that. At the same yes. Time. Yeah. Right. So maybe we need to talk about that. Right? Yeah. Absolutely. And. Uh, so we can do both, and I and I really hope to. I mean, for us, we'll replace that. We use this iPad for the audio. Mm -hmm. You can control it however you want, mm -hmm. right? With whatever device you were using before. We were using the iPad all the time, so I like the iPad. It's really handy. Right. Yeah. Did you have, have you guys been using the iPad? So the iPad is always. Oh, yeah, we're using it on uh, notebook. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. We're using what? I guess yeah, just a laptop. Notable. Yeah. Yeah. Laptop. Yeah. yeah, laptop. Yeah, um, yeah. tablets, anything. They're yeah. all okay. They, they, you can serve up any of them. I just think the software is so much better than it the is. Android it, one. It is. Well, <laughs> it, it depends. On the, on the, yeah, laptop. I can argue with you because I have a custom software for an Android, so I can make it look the way I want to. And I can move faders all over, take a fader oh, well. from this bus, a fader from that bus, and just make my own. Well. I do that because I mix live bands so often. Uh, we have so many different channels, and they use them at different times, so I have different presets that I can call them up in different orders. Yeah. So this one, I mean, whatever computer you use, that would also, if you're going to use it, use an internet video or something like that, if you're going to play it off of that, this can be connected to the Wi-Fi, mm -hmm. and then it can be displayed on the screen, just like the graphics do, right? Okay. Check, 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 Anyway, that's that's the that's the size of the situation okay. here, and I think uh, we're going to need another Good camera. To <laughs> okay, so a third camera is a great thing. I can just use it. Here, it's just the watch. Yeah, and there's nothing wrong with having a camera on a tripod that you still add into this system into, into number three. Here. So um, number three is plugged into the back. It has both an SDI or a switchable HDMI input. So you're allowed to use one or the other if you want to. So if you do have another HDMI camera that you want to plug in, it can simply plug into number three there. You guys have one? Uh, you just have HDMI. Yeah. Yeah. You just have USB camera. Camera. Uh, yeah. 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 yeah, we we do have a camera, but we used to just use that one camera just right at the front in the middle. Right. But because we've got that we've two got cameras two, right now, I think covered, we're, right? we're good. Yeah. Okay. Good. Yeah. Um, I have a question. Is there yeah. any steps that we turns it on or turns it off? Ah. Like, it's Everything is powered like this before off of this switch. Everything is powered off of that. So, of so when you turn that on, everything comes on. Mm -hmm. So yeah. we don't need to turn individual things okay. on. We just leave them on and hit the, hit the one switch here. Okay. But of course, you want to shut the computers down. Like <laughs> Which have to be done manually the same right. way you do that. Set those down. But this does have a power switch. In case somebody's turned it off, mm -hmm. there's a power switch and there's a power switch on that too. Yeah. Okay. And that monitor, of course, comes on whenever the monitors come on. Whenever when they're, when they switch, switch the switch on. But you, you want to turn it up, turn it up those two. Well, if it's okay to leave it on, we'll just leave it on. Yeah. yeah. But so it'll be switch button, you know. But if it does, somebody does turn it off, there is a switch to turn it on. Okay. So now uh, it's your turn. Oh, come on up front. It's your turn. I'm just saying, we should all take a turn at moving the controls and just kind of feeling how it works. It, like I say, the good news is it's not difficult. It's not meant to be difficult, it's meant to be easy. The other thing is, and I'm actually going to get you guys, you young guys, I'm going to bring that platform up here and put it in here so it raises it up to the same level. So we don't have to sit in the hole. Get a little bit more comfortable. So that's C, we don't have anything on C, we have A and B. That's going to be our subject for the uh, yeah. focus. So again, if you want to store a preset, press store and then pick three, for example. Yeah. So now we can go back because it's once you store it, it's done. You don't have to press anything else again. So you can go back and see, there's my one, okay. there's my two, 
and there's my new three. Okay. Camera two. Sanyang Z two한 걸로. So when you guys set up, so you're going to set up on that now, right? Mm -hmm. There you go. Zoom in on him a little bit. 그래서 보이면 이제 쉽게 말하면은 찬양 팀이 할 때는 그 찬양하는 사람들 다 나와 찬양하는 걸로 하고, 그다음에 설교할 때는 어떤 느낌이면 처음에는 아마 그 갈등한 사람이 합하면 될 가능성이 없고. Okay. Four, 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 three. Hmm. 네, 이번에 찬양하는 것만 카메라가 여기 있고 사람들은 저희 찬양팀은 다 들고 있고 그런데 괜찮아요? 한 번이 그 해봐야 있어요. 해봤어요. So that's uh, preset number one on, on camera number one. Yep. Uh, that's three. So just go to number one here. Okay. And come right in. Okay. Okay. We just have slightly different presets because for us, we don't do sermons at the pulpits that are set no. up. We set our own pulpits. And like I say, so. you guys can figure out how to do it, but it's so easy to change them that my thought is just come in, set them up the way you want to, and then, and then they're ready to go. I just and thought it would be nice that we could count on having two presets that are already done so we don't have to set them up when you come each time. Right. Mm -hmm. right. So two for you, two for us, and then we, we can use them, of course, if, if you set them up. Just set them back. You know, like we'll probably have one in the middle, too. We'll probably use the one that you have for three in the middle because when we do communion, we do that in the center mm -hmm. okay. also. So right. you know, it would be useful to us to be able to do that. but. It's just nice to be able to count on one when you come and say, well, I'll just get one and get used to it always being the same place. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And now we've gone over to the video, mm -hmm. the video input, which is number four. So, yeah, number one, there you go. Now you're there live. Mm -hmm. Okay. The, the thing to try to remember mm -hmm. is to leave the red alone. Never change the red. Okay. Yeah. Always change the green. And then you know what you're doing. Is yeah. not going to affect what's on what's on the broadcast. Mm -hmm. Green means go. I'm thinking that we should have had this over there. It it could fit right over there too if you like. You just bring this this way and put that one beside it and move the laptop a little bit that way. Yeah, because. 거기 그 카메라 2를 카메라 1 같은 고 같은 위치를 한번 만들어 볼수 있어? 저희 걸로요? 카메라 2를 지금 원 보이는 거하고 똑같. 그, 그 장면이요. 어, 이쪽, 이게 어디지? 아, 저, 이쪽에 있는 거죠. 그게 투자네. 네. 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 Okay, do you wanna you wanna come over and give yeah, it sure. a try? Yeah. It's okay, you said no matter technique I tell them, I'm preaching there. Okay, you're, <laughs> so you're gonna be up there. Yeah. They're gonna be back here. Yeah. Okay, good. He's the talent. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Matt, it's your turn. Then I who else is going to do this? Okay, I'll go next. You're going to go? I was just told to come here to translate. The key, yeah. So, so again, this is our joystick controller. So we have camera B, which is always the side one, and camera A, which is always the close one. Okay? And then again, the same thing. The close one is here, the far one is there, and then the graphics are on four. Okay. So, yep, change the green one to the other one. Yep, and now you can move the transition to move from camera one to camera two. Exactly. You can only send a two camera. I think you can. We using the same thing. So change back. Camera focus. Wait, no, that's not one. Yeah. Yeah. There's the angle is so slight. Like it really won't make a difference. Yeah. Why don't you make it? Okay. 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 I got it. I got it. Okay. For us. And that's just how it changes. Here's the pattern changes. Whether from here, it wipes, it fades, or it cuts. Okay. This space. Yeah. So there you go. You just wipe the PowerPoint. Which is actually a nice transition. Yeah. Yeah. 
And then here you're on camera one, so you want to look here and set where you want it to be. All the junk in the corner. Right? Yeah. And then if that's the image that you want to preset, then go ahead and hit the store. And then the preset that you want to do. Just press it 